click got it so we can move forward. Awesome and welcome. Uh, my name is Brett Jennings, uh, one of your co-hosts today, along with Joey B. Denedetto, and we're going to talk about closing two deals a month is easier than one. And that sounds like a bold statement, but it's a fact. And we'll show you it's not just one person that's doing that, two, pe two people that are doing that. We, uh, Joey and I are both coaching over 22 agents who are doing that and more, uh, which you'll soon see. So excited to share the content today. And Joey, you want to talk a little bit about our purpose? Yeah, my name is Joey. I'm the Managing Director of Sales and Growth over at Real Estate Experts. And the purpose of today is really to help you to systematize the ebbs and flows, the pitfalls, the rises, the roller coaster ride that is a lot of our business throughout the year. I want to make sure that you understand that at the end of this, the goal is for you to have actual things, actionable items that you can take from today and put it into your business to help you create this magic word that we call momentum. Because what I know for sure is that getting to two deals a month doesn't require 100% more effort than it did to get to one. It actually requires significantly less. And we're going to dive into all of that today. And Here's what I know. Yeah. I know, I know that your mind works better when it's open, kind of like a parachute. So consider this the start of we're on the plane. We just took off. So all I ask is that as we go through this, you probably have heard some of these things before. Maybe you haven't heard them, but you're hearing them for the first time. I'm just going to ask that you open your brain to the concepts that we're going to talk about today and, and allow your brain to take in this information so that we can actually do something with it later. And let's talk about implementation. So one of the things, nothing pains me personally more. Uh, I've spent 15 years in the business, um, probably well over, uh, certainly over $250,000 probably close to half a million dollars on coaching, training, masterminds and development. That's really helped me uh, and not just me build my business and consistently take it to the next level and actually do that for other agents. But when I take the time to share that information, when people don't implement, it's one of the things that drives me crazy. So here's a couple simple facts that we know about learning. Um, if you just sit there passively today and listen to what we have to say, you'll remember about 10% of what we share. And I don't know about you, but if we're going to spend the next hour, 60 to 90 minutes together, if we share 10 great ideas and you only get one, um, I think we're both leaving stuff on the table. Can we agree? Secondly, it's, it's, been, it's been proven that if you now listen and you take notes, so I will ask you to grab something to write with. Uh, if you listen and take notes, you'll remember about 30% of what we share. Okay. But what's interesting is that if you listen, you take notes and you participate, for example, Joey's going to ask some questions from time to time. Hey, how many of you are doing this or thinking that? Um, if you participate, your retention goes as high as 70% or more. So if we're going to maximize our time together because you've taken the time that we've taken the time, I'd like to ask that of you. If you're good with that, say, hey, I'm good, or give me a thumbs up or type it in the chat. And if we can't see you, this is a great chance for you to turn on your camera. So we can see your beautiful faces and your beautiful thumbs. Awesome. All right, let's keep going. So here's something we want to start with. The, and I know there was a, something, uh, the, the point about what we're going to share today is the time to implement uh, this is now. What you're looking at right now is a slide just to kind of tie back to the market here. What's happening in the market, we all know, is the market slowed down dramatically. Why? Well, what you're looking at right here is telling us that this is a graph of how many homeowners have a mortgage of less than 4%. You can see we have about 26% of homeowners out there have a mortgage on their property um, of 3% or less. That's their interest rate. They might have a two, two and a half or a three. Close to 45% have a mortgage between three and 4% and 20% have a mortgage between four and five. But over 70% of people having a rate in 4% or less is really creating what we call this lock-in effect. And to take a look at this next graph here. This kind of tells us how and why the raise in interest rates has affected the market. So what we're seeing there is that the dark colored red, the people who have an interest rate below 3%, they're absolutely not selling, right? No one's going to jump out of their two or three percent more two percent mortgage to jump into a seven percent loan. They're simply just not going to transact. Now, the next group group of people between three and four percent, if that's their interest rate on their current mortgage, they're probably not going to sell. The third group 
Um, these people are going to think hard before selling, but some of these people are selling, and that's if they have a current interest rate between four and five percent. It kind of depends on their circumstances, but it also depends on a great agent educating them. And that we're going to talk a little bit about what the opportunity is with that today. And then the people who are transacting uh, right now are people or who either life event moves, right? Because they absolutely have to move. Somebody passed away, the house has got to sell. Uh, they're getting relocated, they have to sell. But the discretionary movers are people who have an interest rate between uh, over 5%, which um, kind of takes us to the next concept, Joey, that we were talking about before this call. And that is, um, so what's, what this has done, and here's the opportunity in this. So I want you all to pay attention. There is opportunity, even though this market has slowed down, and this is it. What you're looking at here is um, it's now telling us that about one in four homeowners right now are considering selling. That number is huge. It's way higher. If you look at the far right and you look at the graph preceding it, on any given normal year in the market, only about 15 to 18 percent of people are thinking about selling. OK, but this lock in effect that we've seen of interest, the, the raise in interest rates has a bunch of people on the sidelines that now want to move. And guess what? We know that high rates aren't going to stay this way forever. So that's the opportunity that's ahead of us. And the strategies we're going to talk about today on how doing two deals a month is easier than one is going to help set you up for success. So when rates come down, you're there to harvest that opportunity. You're the agent who they're going to be in contact with. Brett, let me add one more thing to this. I want you all to think of this like a boiling pot of water. And you there's too much water in the pot right now it's it's going to at some point in time it's going to boil over and the challenge is, is that most agents in the market wait until the water has boiled over to turn down the heat or even turn up the heat whatever it might be they wait too long the the strategies and the models and the systems we're talking about today you need to start implementing right now so that you're not you're not behind the curve when the interest rates make a shift which we know they're going to like this is this is why this information is so important and crucial right now. So here's here's what the um, effectively what we've just shared with you tells us that seventy six percent of buyers who have a home to sell say that they're reluctant to sell because they prefer to keep their current interest rate, and therein lies the opportunity. So the question is, the question is these people are waiting. All right and they're on the sidelines and you all have buyers like this who are waiting and on the sidelines and this is the participation part so if you're on mute i'm going to ask you to come off mute or type it in the chat what is the number one thing your people are waiting for if you've got buyers or sellers who are sitting on the sidelines on the fence waiting what are they waiting for interest rates to go down rates to go down everybody else give me a thumbs up if that's the number one thing you're seeing hearing okay Absolutely. better inventory yeah, it, it, inventory is not bad considering the amount of buyers. We've had half of the buyers move to the sidelines and we've had half of the sellers move to the sidelines. So given the amount of buyers out there, you know, inventory is not great, but it could be better. But the ratio of buyers to sellers is about what it, it has been in the past. Um, interest rates going down, people waiting for a good deal. If they're waiting for a good deal, okay, yeah, they're going to be waiting a long time. Rates to go down, rates to drop, rates to drop. Well, here's what the question is. What do rates have to get to before people mm -hmm. will start jumping in? And this is a pretty cool fact that uh, Zillow came out with a survey. They, they did a consumer survey recently, and they identified that the mortgage rate tipping point, right? That's that rate where people are more likely to move, which is the key to unlocking the housing market, is homeowners basically getting rates to 5%. They're saying homeowners with a rate currently, right now what we saw is people with a rate over 5%, those guys and gals are moving because the jump to go from a 5% to a 7% mortgage, it's 2%. Yeah, the payment goes up, but I can swallow that, okay? So what this is telling us is that when rates start down or approach the fives, we are gonna see a surge of activity and we wanna be ahead of that, right, Joey? Yep, D we wanna be like so far ahead of it, it hurts. Yeah. So the question is, where are mortgage rates headed? Well, the good news is we've got some pretty good resources in uh, across the industry uh, that, that tell us, or at least try to forecast for us, where they think rates are going. Uh, and this is the combination of what Fannie Mae, uh, MBA is the Mortgage Bankers Association, and NAR is the National Association of Realtors, are forecasting 
for rates uh, here at the end of the year, going into Q1, Q2, and Q3. Uh, and this concurs with um, Patty Goodspeed, is one of our mortgage professionals who uh, is an expert on the market. She's forecasting May of 2024 that we're going to see rates somewhere in those fives, five point something. And that is what's going to be key to, to unlock. So if there's anything you learn today, it's it's the market is it's pretty balanced right now. But as these rates start to drift down, we're going to feel it pick up and you want to get ahead of it because as soon as those rates start to come down, you're going to have more and more people getting off the sidelines and you want to be there, right, to grab their hand and pull them on the boat. Joey? So here's the question. The question that you're probably asking when you read this is like, is it actually possible? Is two deals a month actually easier than one? And there, the actual act of creating more opportunity for yourself, when you are, if you already have opportunity, is significantly easier than trying to drum it up from nothing. And so we want to share a, a specific, a specific sort of um, concept or an idea with you. But I want to sh before we do that, I want to share with you that this concept and this idea is what we're training to in our brokerage. So on this list is a handful of agents who are closing two plus deals a month. This list is only about half of the number of agents that actually closed two deals a month in the month of August already. In the month of August, we've got 22 agents that have already closed two plus deals a month, which they're, they're already implementing the systems, tools, and models that we've been talking about. And I know that because we sit and coach with them every week, all day long. And so why? Why? What, what on earth is happening? Why, why are they in this, in this framework of of receiving more opportunity than seemingly other agents in the market. It's this amazing concept that you've probably heard of that's called momentum. And momentum can be created. And the amazing part about momentum is that, as I said before, it doesn't require 100% more energy or effort to get into or maintain momentum. Once you get to a certain place, it only requires a, a, a little baby lift. And so, yeah. Brett, you know what, let's talk about the flywheel effect. Yeah, it, it, this is interesting because my very first year in the business, I, I mentored with a, a gentleman by the name of Dave Keefe. He was a high producing agent uh, at Keller Williams at the time. And I, I had the opportunity to basically be a solo agent. Um, I've certainly had a, a contact base big enough. I've sold before. I had experience in other types of sales. But I wanted to partner with him in his business because he was in momentum. I could see the guy was closing four, five, six transactions a month. Um, and what he told me, I remember the day I got started, he goes, Brett, because I think I set the goal my first year to do 12 deals. And he goes, 12 deals? It's a lot easier to do two a month than it is one a month. And I was like, why? He's like, because deals beget more deals. Like when, 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 you, when you deliver an awesome experience for a buyer and you ask for referrals, you get more business. He's like, when you have a listing, as my friend Alon Pinnell says, is bread, listings make babies. Listings make babies. So business be begets more business. But to get into momentum, we use this concept of the flywheel. And here's what basically the principle is of a flywheel. Flywheel is a giant wheel. Sometimes they're in a hydroelectric dam where they have these huge turbines and it's super heavy. The amount of energy it takes to get going is a ton of energy. But once that flywheel starts turning, it doesn't take a lot. Once it's spinning, it only takes a small amount of energy to keep it turning or even to increase its speed. So we're going to leverage this principle as we talk about how to get in two deals, uh, how two deals a month is actually easier than one. And Brett, this isn't just like a, a, a fun thing that we've created. This yeah, isn't this an is idea. Not, I also, yeah, I want to say this. This is not my just mindset. Like, you know, we're not just like waxing philosoph philosophically. <laughs> Um, this is physics, guys. This is Newton's first law of motion, which says an object that is at rest will tend to stay at rest. And an object that is motion, that is in motion, will tend to stay in motion. But as Joey and I talked about, we, we this has a little bit different nuance as we've seen it in real estate. And that is a body in motion tends to stay in motion, while a body at rest tends to come up with a lot of excuses. <laughs> and it, let me say this another way an agent who's in motion stays in motion while an agent who's at rest tends to come up with a lot of excuses as to why it's not working out. But let me give you an idea of, of an agent who's not, who is in momentum. She's the case study in momentum. So Felicia Duncan is an, is an amazing agent in her own right. And she's on one of our best teams here at Real Estate Experts. But here's, here's the amazing part about Felicia. 
uh, Felicia asked to have a coaching session. So I sat down with her on a Zoom call and I said, okay, talk to me about your business. Where are you at? What do you got going on? She's like, well, how many people are in your database? She goes, oh, well, I actually, I don't, I don't have a database. And I was like, what, what, what are you talking about? You don't have a database. And she goes, yeah, you know, I don't really, I've never really kept the database. I don't have anybody in like a, a CRM, if you will. I was like, okay, well, that's mission critical number one. And I said, how many like, how many people do you think you could add to your database in the next 10 days? And she was like, well, I just had a birthday party and I invited 250 people to my birthday party. And I was like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You took the time to get 250 people's emails and contact information to invite them to your birthday party. I don't even like 250 people. And they showed up and you didn't put those people into your database. And she was like, yeah. Yeah, that makes, yeah, I, I probably should have done that. So I challenged her. I gave her an, un, uh, honestly, an unbelievable challenge. I challenged her to call all or make contact with all 250 of those people within seven days. I said, you have one week, one week to get into contact with all these people and have a real estate conversation where you are either asking what their real estate needs are or if they know anybody that has any real estate needs. And Felicia, it, unbelievable the amount of momentum that she got. So Felicia ended up calling 250 people in her SOI. She asked about real estate. She asked about their real estate needs or if they have, they know somebody who has real estate needs. Felicia set 16 listing appointments in seven days. She set four buyer's appointments in seven days. And that those uh, 20 appointments have garnered her well over $150,000 just in that quarter that she was having those conversations. It's a, she's an unbelievable agent. And this is just a, a, a testament to what happens when you do something consistently and get into momentum. And now she's the number one listing agent at the brokerage. She's put more units than any other agent at the brokerage. She is in a momentum step status that has continued since she started making these calls. And here, here's, here's what I know. I know that to move somebody from mediocrity to immense success, and by no means is Felicia mediocre, just for the record, but to move someone from where they are to where they say they want to be, it requires persistency and consistency. And one of the challenges is, is that in that roller coaster of business that we talked about, and some of you are on this call, I was at Keller Williams for five years, I've heard it a million times, Joey, this wasn't my best year in my business, I gotta completely revamp my business. You're, there's not enough persistency and consistency on a few things that work. Like just call, just talk to 250 people. There's people want to get as far and wide away from the acts of doing the things that we know work. They don't, you just have to focus in on a few key activities and you have to be patient enough to, to receive or achieve momentum. So here's, how do we do it? How do we help you build it? So let's get into like the nitty gritty of it. So I, I share Felicia's story because I want you to know that part of the concepts and the principles of what we're going to talk about today are in her story. We're going to come back to her in a minute because I want to share, or at the end, because I want to share more about her. But Brett, let's dive into how we build momentum. Well, the first principle I'm really building in momentum is it starts with mindset. You got to have a core belief system. If there's one thing that um, in all the work that I got to do, probably some of the most powerful work uh, in my own personal development was working with Tony Robbins and really like he taught me the one principle, before you go set out to do anything, find people who are successful at what you're doing and find out what they think. Before you get in to start doing what they do, find out what they think. Because if you find out how they think and you adopt those same belief systems, you intuitively will naturally take actions just by having the right mindset. And so there's seven core beliefs that, to a mindset of momentum. And the first one is, you have to think like a business owner and not a salesperson. And you know, the, the distinction I want to make here is a salesperson is someone who's often always just kind of looking for their next deal. You know, if we think about salespeople who work in retail, they wait for the customer to come in, you know, whereas a business owner, a business owner, you're thinking long term, you're thinking about building something and you're thinking about investing into your business as opposed to, as, as opposed to waiting uh, for business to come to you. And that kind of leads us to our second. Let me ask you a question real quick. How many of you on here experienced a slowdown in the market over the last eight, nine, 10 months? How many of you experienced? Raise your hand, put something in the chat, just say me. Give me an example. Let me understand who here has experienced something. Okay, pretty much everybody has experienced some form or fashion of a slowdown. Here's what I know is that when the market slows down, we, 
we move from business owner to salesperson, when the market takes a hit, whether it be whatever it might be, but when it moves to a slower pace, which is where we're at, we tend to go to, oh no, I need to get as many deals as I can right away. What's the lowest hanging fruit? And we end up dropping the business owner side of things, the things we know we should be doing, the things everyone tells us to do. And so we end up getting stuck. And so this is your reminder. If this first principle doesn't hit you like a ton of bricks, this is your reminder that if you've been in a salesperson mindset, your job from today on is to step into a business owner mindset because there's no way you move from deal to deal to business that you wanna have it, unless you make this one transition. And Joey, as I talk about number going to number two, Felicia Duncan was a great example of this. When Joey met with Felicia, she'd been in the business, was it over 15 years, right, Joey? Oh yeah, she's a seasoned agent. Seasoned agent, but, but she did not have a database, okay? And so the first principle of being a business owner in real estate, not just a salesperson, is have a, a real legitimate database. Because ultimately the size of your database equals the size of your business. The size of your bit database is the size of your business. Or put another way, your business is directly related to the, the size of your business is directly related to the number of people who know you're in business. And we have some people who, and there's a lot of different ways to go about that, but I'm telling you, building a database and feeding it every day is the simplest, easiest path. We have other people who do it a different way. If the size of our business is related to the number of people who know we in business, we have people who farm at our, at our company, at our brokerage. Uh, Lex Orozco, 70,000 flyers a month go out uh, on, it, to, on his behalf to people in the market. So 70,000 people a month know he's in business. And guess what? He gets four or five deals a month. But you don't need to have 70,000 people. Actually, we're going to get to a core principle at the end here. Um, but the, that kind of leads us to the next thing. Um, this is something that also kind of drives me crazy from time to time. Nuts. Not so. Yep. Yeah is somebody says, oh, you know, uh, this person called and I got this lead and, you know, they're not, they're not looking to transact for a year. It's a bad lead. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There is no such thing as a bad lead. There is no such thing as a bad lead. Every lead that you put into your database, unless two things, they either live under a bridge or they are <laughs> a forever apartment dwelling. If they are a human being and they don't live under a bridge and they're not a rent, like a lifetime renter, they will transact real estate. We just need to stay in front of them until they do. It's just a matter of time. So that's the second. Do you know, my, do you know, do you know what my favorite bad lead is, Brad? Oh yeah, yeah no, that's, it's my, she's my best friend, but she doesn't, she doesn't live here. We're like, yeah. oh no, she, yeah, oh, that person, I love that guy, but you know, I just don't, like, I don't want to bother him. That's not a bad lead. That's you being a bad agent. Get those people into your dang database. Yeah, no, here's, I'll give you enough. I mean, probably best case in point, we sometimes get land leads. Uh, people call, you know, you, with, with Zillow, sometimes in a zip code, the cheapest listing will often be a land lead if there is some raw land uh, for sale in that zip code. And we had this happen uh, two years ago and most agents would have passed on it. Oh, there's not a house to sell there. I'm not going to call this guy. And it didn't even have a phone number on it. The lead came through, it was just an email. So one of our agents, Johnny B, was diligent enough to track down the phone number. He ended up selling, the guy called on a, on a small piece of land in Los, that called, he, he, he requested online some information about a small piece of land in Los Altos. Um, he kept in touch and kept pursuing that lead for six months. He ended up, uh, the guy came from Ireland, flew over to look at property, and he ended up buying the house, the former home of Elon Musk a $31 million deal, and it was a land lead, which many agents would have rejected. So there's no such thing as a bad lead. Amen. Yeah. The fourth belief um, for a mindset of success in building momentum is have a long-term versus a short-term vision. Uh, leads that will transact, like the time horizon we're going to talk about, like for leads that we're going to consider, uh, and let's not even call them leads, they're really opportunities. I'm using the language leads because that's what you're all familiar with. But as we talk about them here inside of Real Estate Experts, they're opportunities. And these are opportunities that will tr transact in the next two years, where most agents, as Joey talked about, the reason they get in trouble is they're just looking for that buyer or seller that's going to tr transact in the next two months. So it's expanding the scope of your vision is the fourth key principle. 
The, the other interesting piece about this too, Brett, is that if you are able, most agents are on the ground, they're soldiers in the battle of real estate on a day-to-day -day basis. They're worried about the deal that's in front of them and the deal that might be coming next. If, if you can actually open your, uh, your vision to see longer term out, there's so much opportunity that you're missing because you're so focused on what's right in front of you. You miss what's all around you that's happening that might just be a little bit further away. So this thinking long-term idea, this vision planning and future pacing will be a game changer for you, not only in the way in which you operate inside your business, but the way in which the, the business operates to you. Unbelievable. I, Joey, unbelievable. Joey, there's one last point I want to add to that because someone told me this once and it really hits home when you think about the scope or the length of your vision, okay? The length of your vision will determine the amount of income and wealth you have in your life. I repeat that just so if you didn't hear it the first time. The scope of your vis vision will determine the income and wealth you will have in your life, okay? If you think about someone with very short-term vision is the bum on the street, okay? He's worried about his next fix and his next meal, okay? If you think about a person who's living paycheck to paycheck, quite literally, their vision or scope of, of time is two weeks. And if you look at people who are doing big things in the world, they're doing five-year, 10-year, 20-year, 30-year plans. So the scope of your vision will determine your income and your wealth. So if that is kind of one thing to really bring that back home. Yeah. Um, Joe, you, you want to take this one because we talked about this. This is something that you're kind of personally passionate about. Do I? Do I ever? Look, let me just say something. Every time you touch your database, we, we call them touches, right? Which is a, a, a verbiage that we use in the real estate world. But the honest to God truth is that you have to, touches have to create connection. That it, the whole purpose of reaching out to your database especially the ones who you want to be in business with is designed to create connection. I was in a training the other day and I got this piece of nugget that will, that will sit with me forever, which is it, once you learn about your client, it's about getting tactical with what you've learned to create connection and build, build uh, and create learning and build relationship. So oftentimes connection looks like giving before you ask or before you get. I know, a lot, I can't tell you how many agents raise their hand when they say, when, they, when I ask, how many of you are afraid to make calls to your database? And they raise their hand and they say, well, I don't, wanna, I don't want my database to feel like I just want to be in business with them. It would look a lot different if the next time you called them, instead of calling to talk to them about real estate, you called them to ask them about the trip they just went on that you saw on Facebook, the kid they just had, how school's going, what you've got, what, what's going on in their life. And then the next time you call after that, when you call about real estate, suddenly it's like, oh, this person actually just wants to talk to me. And it happens to be a good time to talk about real estate. You got to give before you get. So this is your if, take away the fact that you're calling to your database or your especially your sphere needs to be uh, value driven and and tactical learning on top of that. Awesome. Oh, wait, let me just continue. Do you mind? Go ahead. All right. This is, a, this is it. This is the connecting and caring part is that if they don't know you care, then they have no idea that they'll, they'll never want to be in business with you. If they don't think you care about the outcome of their world. Real estate is all about the relationship until it's about real estate. Now, I, st I stole this. Brett, tell your story because the story is really yeah, good. Yeah, no, no. That actually, actually, I've been in the business 15 years and someone wrote this saying on the conference, the whiteboard in the conference room. And I walked in there and I was like, real estate's all about relationships until it's about real estate really wait a second it really is like real estate is all about relationships until it's about real estate so we really have to come from that giving place have a sincere desire to connect and care that becomes the foundation of the starting point for all of the outbound touches that we're going to do as we build this database to create momentum i'll tell you right now i there's a i went to a range rover dealership one one time and talked to this guy about like what I was looking for, what he, what I was looking to buy. That man, to the day, every quarter, I get a text message from that man saying, "Hey, hey, Joey, it's it's uh, Ron over at over at Range Rover Henderson. Just wanted to check in, and see how you're doing. Here's a five dollar Starbucks gift card. If you're if you're in the area, I'd love to take you out to coffee and talk about how we can get you into your next car. I don't have any plan on buying a Range Rover anytime soon." But that you better believe when I do, I'm not going to anybody else but Ron because I got a lot of Starbucks gift cards. I want to go get some free coffee, and I want and I want to make sure that Ron knows that I care. 
Like, I want to know that I want, I know that Ron cares. I want to make sure that Ron knows I'm going to take care of him when the time comes for me to buy that Range Rover. So little baby things that are relationship driven create massive impact in your business. And the last one is really about taking action. Uh, and the real, the, really the difference we see between unsuccessful people and successful people, and that is unsuccessful people will wait to feel good before, you know, they got to get in the mood to do business development or lead generate or opportunity development, as we call it. Whereas successful people, they simply make the decision, they get in, they lead generate, and then they feel good because they're creating success. So it's don't wait for success. Don't wait to feel good before you can create success create success, and then you'll feel good. I know for a fact that the hardest part about working out is getting your ass to the gym. I know for a fact that's the hardest part. And the people who just get to the gym, I promise you they feel better faster than, than the people who, who wait until they feel like going to the gym and feel like it's going to be a good thing. It's the same principle in your business. If you wait to feel good, it, it, feeling good is, is in, it has no indication on your success. So get rid of that feeling of good and just understand that when you do the work and, and you have evidence of success, you'll start to feel better. Okay, so speaking of evidence of success, if, if you are one of those people who, is, uh, who has a hard time getting into the groove of things, you have a hard time, you are the person who waits to feel good before you start to take action, I beg you, read this book. It's called Fanatical Prospecting. It's by a guy named Jeb Blount. And he will get you out of your comfort zone and into your productive zone really, really quickly. He does an amazing job of communicating how, why you're there and how to get out. Brett, you want to add anything? Yeah, I mean, here's the deal. <clears throat> Mindset is the key to, to success. It's 90%, it's often said 80% of success is the mindset, 20% is mechanics. I go so far as to say it's 90%. In my experience of coaching, mentoring, and training hundreds of agents, I would say 95% of people, except some unicorns, like have resistance to picking up the phone or texting people and getting into conversation, okay? What Jeb does amazingly well, if you have any of that going on, I implore, invite, encourage you to get this book. I'm just dropping it in the chat right now. If you've got an Audible account, listen to it on Audible uh, or buy the book. Jeb takes you on a, I'll call it a tour, right? through your own mind and all the stories we have about why we don't want to do that activity to pick up the phone, to connect with people and call. And he helps unwind your, uh, your BS, your belief systems about uh, your, your limiting belief systems about why you're not doing that. So grab that. If there's one thing that you do today, grab, click on that link, grab that book. No doubt about it. And the second principle yeah, is, is we talked about mindset. So we got our head on straight. Now it's about getting into action. And when I mean getting into action, here's the basic principle. Here's what we know. Conversion of one of the people in your sphere of influence, right, into an opportunity or a lead into a buyer or lead into a seller. Um, it only happens in conversation. We have to talk to those people. And to do that well and to do it at a high level requires persistency and consistency. How much? Not a ton. Like we're talking between two hours and three hours a day of being on the phone to make $500,000 a year or more in real estate. Okay. And by the way, if you consistently do 24 transactions uh, a year, you're going to be well on your way to that number. But if, if you can't bring yourself to put in two hours of work, to earn a multiple six-figure income, like, I, I, I might say we can't help you, you know? It's, it's I would consider other, other opportunities. I would consider other <laughs> paths uh, to a career uh, because ultimately that's the bottom line. Joey, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just go, I'll go to the fact that like, I've said it a million times. So if you've heard me say it, forgive me, but real estate is the only industry I know where you can get a C minus on a test and make a million dollars a year. It's, the, it's one of the lowest barriers to entry of getting into it. And that's a blessing and a curse. A lot of the, the low barrier to entry creates an idea that it, it can be, a, it can, you can side hustle your way to success in real estate. When the honest to God truth is that the people who are most successful treat their real estate career as a job. And they show up every single day, 
committed to what it needs to look like. And there's that phrase, if you're, you've probably heard of it, it's show me the top five people you hang around and I'll show you what your future looks like. The same thing applies to real estate when it comes to your calendar. If you show me your calendar, I'll tell you, I, I could easily tell you your income. I have coached hundreds of agents on this one principle of, their, of time blocking their calendar for the business they say they want. Not the business they have, which is how most of you have time blocked your calendar, but the business you say you want. And so I wanna share with you, we've shared it a lot here, but this is what, a per, what we call a perfect week. This has every aspect of growth for you as an indiv individual agent. You have Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you have some form of fashion of sharpening the saw, which is training, it's role play. It's getting the marbles out of your mouth. It's talking about what the market is right now. You have, a, you have some form or fashion of accountability. So whether it be with a with a peer to peer or you're in a group or you have a coaching session or something like that, there's there's some form of uh, fashion of accountability in your world around your goals. And then we set from nine to 11. Why do we set from nine to 11? Because it's no different than going to the gym. It's, easy to, it's easier to get to the gym in the morning before things get busy than it is at five o'clock at night and you're exhausted. It's a lot easier to do your lead generation in the morning before anything gets in your way than it is to try and do it at the end of your day after a busy day. Look, and Joe, then, yeah, can I share a story around that? Please. Yeah, so, so my first year in the business, um, my, my why was built in. I, I got in the business uh, sub, September, I think it was 22nd. And the reason I remember that because September 15th, 2008 was a pretty significant day. Anybody remember what day that was? September 15th, 2008? Yeah, it was the day Bear Stearns collapsed. So yeah. I got my license uh, the week before Bear Stearns collapsed. My wife was nine months pregnant. So like success, <laughs> my reasons for success were built in. Um, and so in my first year, I did 12 transactions. My second year, I joined a coaching program with Craig Proctor. And I started generating some leads online. Uh, and their thing was like, look, you need to make the time to be consistent and persistent with your lead generation or prospecting and lead follow-up, okay? So this is exactly what my calendar looked like my second year in the business. And I did 36 transactions. Now, many people, you can follow this calendar and get, get 24 transactions easily if you really are disciplined and diligent about following this. And the reason, Joey, uh, said nine to 11, not only is, is that a great time, is it just so happens that, again, we all have resistance to doing that kind of activity, or many of us do, I should say. Uh, and it's been proven when they do studies on willpower, your willpower is the strongest in the morning. It fades in the afternoon. But I also, when I mentored with Gina Blafari, was one of my first mentors who founded Intero and now the CEO of uh, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, he, he, he said, he gave me a quote one time and I, I wrote the quote down. I taped it to the bottom of my computer. It was on the bottom of my computer for the first five years of my career. And it said this, the most successful agents do their prospecting and lead follow-up early in the day. Why? Because look, like life gets in the way. If you have resistance to it and you kind of procrastinate, put it off and put it off and put it off. And guess what? Like the afternoon comes and now you don't have that willpower and it doesn't happen. But by the, by the same contract, by the same principle, if you get it done early in the day, the rest of your day can go totally sideways. You get distracted, the key get calls because you got to go pick up your kids, but you got what you needed done for your business that day. So what we're talking about here is 10 hours. We're looking at the green blocks. They're green because they make you money. Um, so I would go three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'd go home and have dinner with my family. I'd kiss my wife and my baby and then come back to the office and knock out another couple hours of calls. My goal was to set four appointments a week. Um, and if I didn't get four, then in the Saturday morning, you see that little block from 9.30 or 10 to 12 before my open house, uh, I would do a little bit more. But that is the framework. If you're looking to adopt a calendar, and like Joey said, if it's not in your calendar, it doesn't exist. And the other piece of the puzzle, is for those of you who are like, well, 36 deals, just remember, well, this is a really bad market. It'd be really hard to get 36 transactions. Year two in the business was the, the market had collapsed in Brett's year two. It was dead, dead in the water. So this is, I promise you, a better market right now than 2009 was or 2010. It's a and much crazy, better market. Yeah, the reason we're having this conversation with you now and, and, and inviting you to, to hear what we're saying and apply what we're doing now is because the rates are going to drip down. And when they do, it's just like your opportunity to, to ride the wave. But now's the time to set it up.
All right, let's go to number three. So principle number three is about building your database. We talked about you got to think like a business owner, not a salesperson. And the size of your business is the size of your database. So make sure you got a database. What's the best CRM? We get a lot of questions. You know, should I use Follow Up Boss? Should I use Boomtown? Should I use whatever? The best CRM is the one you use. They all are going to have some pluses and minuses, but I think that's uh, the most important thing. But you might be asking, oh, well, shoot, like, I mean, be beyond, you know, my friends and family, who am I going to put in this database? And Joe, you want to talk about like how we help or how they should be thinking, whether it's with us or not, uh, how to really build that database and what kind of lead, so lead sources are working now. Yeah. So we, we've we narrowed, there's, you all know there's 4 billion opportunities for lead sources. We've narrowed it down to four, what we call our core lead sources that are proven to work in our market. And so I'll go through these four with you. They're very, very simple, but they eat and they each have a, uh, a percentage of where your business should come from. So number one is high quality paid online leads. So this is some form or fashion of lead generation that comes to you on a consistent basis. And you want, honestly, you really don't want more than 25% of your business to come from this just because you don't want to be at the will or whim of an, of an outside lead source. But 20 to 25% of your business should be coming from an outside lead source of some sort. And then number two, this is a no brainer. It's your SOI and your past clients. The majority of your business, 45 to 55% of your business should be coming from your SOI, which is your sphere of influence for your past clients. If you don't have past clients, then you have, then take your cell phone out and suddenly that's your call list for the day and yeah. put them into your database. One point I want to make about this, Joey, is here, here's the reality that you said 45, it should be at least 45 to 55%. Here's what I find. If you're an agent and you're struggling, you probably only have sphere of influence business. In fact, you know most agents who put in a full-time effort, unless most of them are only using two of these four that we're gonna talk about. They're using the sphere of influence and they're using number three, open houses, okay? Sphere of influence and open houses are awesome, okay? But guess Phenomenal. what? You're never gonna get, you're, you're, you're never gonna get into momentum. You're never gonna get into momentum with just those two lead sources. And that's where we've been successful in helping coach agents. You know, they, they're as a full-time agent, they do sphere and open houses. They make it five, six, seven, even 10 deals a year, but you're never going to get much past that. Why? Because you're, the business that comes from your sphere of influence is awesome, but it's not predictable. You can't predict Correct. when your friend or someone's going to move. You can't predict when they're going to give you a referral. We want to reach out to them. We want to create those opportunities for that, but we, it's not predictable. Therefore, it's not scalable. So that's why we want to add the high quality online that we talked about, number one. I do want to add a point on number one, Joey, because um, I don't want people to get led down the path. You'll probably all get calls from people, sounds something like this. Uh, Hi, Tripti. This is so-and-so from uh, something, something, you know, marketing. Uh, are you still a realtor? And are you would you take any referrals? Oh, because we got a program where we can generate leads for you and you pay us $1,000 and a 10% referral fee, whatever. Um, be very, very careful. Uh, with that, or even if you go to do online marketing yourself with uh, Google PPC or Facebook leads, not that those aren't good database builders. It's just if you're expecting to get business out of it in the short term, meaning in the next six months, you literally have to generate hundreds and hundreds of leads because it's not that they're bad, right? We said there's no such thing as a bad lead. It's the percentage of people through Facebook and Google uh, that come through, they're what we call high up the funnel. They're just very, very, very just at the top. I'm kind of thinking about real estate. You know, they're not ready to buy. By contrast, high quality online is something where, uh, like for example, Zillow Flex, these are people calling, hey, I want to see this house. Can somebody take me to see this house at four o'clock today? Like that's a completely different lead than somebody who was on Facebook at the car wash that happened to see uh, <laughs> something came across their feed, they clicked on it, and then now that's quote a lead, right? Yep, that's that's really that's a big distinction, and I'll go back two slides. The first two words of paid online is high quality, and that is that is a major distinction. There's nothing wrong with PPC. There's nothing wrong with these other lead sources that might hand you a couple, but high quality online leads is a is a major distinction that we need to make. Yeah, and your SOI and your past. I'm sure we're going to get questions about that. That's like Zillow, Realtor.com, uh, HomeLight, um, Redfin. Yeah. Um, number three is open houses. We've talked about this. And, and to Brett's point earlier, most agents have one or two of these. It, and if you're relatively newer to the business, 
most of your deals come from open houses. You only have one because you haven't tapped into your SOI. But your lead generation sources need to be like your financial investment. You would never take your life savings and put it in one stock and hope for the best. Your financial planner would never allow you to do that. They would diversify as much as possible as they could in high quality opportunities for you that have different amounts of risk. Here's the challenge with focusing on just SOI and just open houses. We just experienced it right now. The number of opportunities just dropped 40% in the last six to eight months. The number of available homes to even host an open house is the lowest it's been in a long, long, long time. It's like getting a little bit better. But still, if your two lead sources are, are reliant on outside things that you can't control, then you're gonna have a hard time maintaining momentum in your business. And the number four thing, this is, this is where we're gonna help you to feed that, that funnel, is farming or some form or fashion of active lead generation, calling, knocking, networking, like you've got to be, you got to have your face in front of other people's faces. Like they need to see that your face is real, that you're in business, that you're a real human being, and they need to create some form or fashion of a connection with you. And this is going to be somewhere about 10 to 20% of the business that flows through you. Yeah. And the farming, the farming is key. Um, and there is a formula. You typically will start with a high quality online sphere of influence and open houses, and then add farming as you start to generate some transactions. Because if you are going to do traditional farming, obviously there's a cost, a fairly sometimes significant cost associated to that. Because you got to be consistent, you got to mail not just 100 homes, 200 homes, 500 homes. You have to do at least 2,000 homes if you're going to farm and expect to get any results. In addition to that, you can't just drop the mail, drop the letters. It quite literally is the concept of farming is planting seeds. But what do we have to do? We have to water those seeds. And the watering those seeds looks like calling into those neighborhoods, knocking on those doors and doing events to create visibility in the community. That's like watering those seeds. I've seen a lot of people do farming and they only mail and they really get little to no results, but building a presence in the community will help you do that. And it, just so you know, there's, there's traditional farming where you drop a postcard or something like that, but some of us forget that digital farming is a really easy way to stay in contact or get in contact with human beings. You can get a mailing list thousands of people deep and digitally farm and then follow through with calling, knocking, or networking at the same time. So if you don't have the cash or the funds or the opportunity to put into mailing things, go look at how can I digitally farm my neighborhood or the neighborhood I want to be selling in. Get strategic about it so that you're not, you're not waiting for, for the opportunity for it to arrive. You're still leveraging some of that while, while your business grows and gets into that momentum. So these are the core four. Number one is SOI and past clients. Number two, uh, we'll flip, sorry, I flipped these two. Number two is high quality paid online. Number three is open houses. And number four is farming, knocking, networking, uh, or calling. This is, how, this is how we want to see the makeup of a healthy business look. Because we've got a lot of, we've got a, the majority of our business in SOI and past clients. And then some form or fashion of a makeup, another 50% roughly in paid online open houses and farming of some sort. So Any now, questions on this piece so far, real quick, these core four? You can either type it in the chat or come off of mute. Most of you guys are on mute because I think when you came into the room, you're automatically on mute. So if you have a question, any questions about the lead sources? All right, let's keep going. Yeah. So once you've, built, yeah, once you've built that database, this is the piece that I find most agents like who, yes, they started to build a database and they may have a database, but to get and can, to create and sustain momentum, you want to create what I call your top 100, okay? And your top 100 is this. You're going to look to not just, so when you bring people into your database or you put people into your database, you're going to need to separate the people who are not thinking about buying or selling at all, right? They've got hey, we're, we're in this house. We don't have any plans of thinking of buying or selling, but you have their name and contact information. Then you have what we call real opportunities. And these are people anywhere from one day to two years out, right? One day to two years out that say, yeah, we're thinking about buying or selling or, you know, yeah, my wife retires from teaching next year and she's going to sell. So that would be what we call an active opportunity. So your top 100 is going to be uh, 100 opportunities of people that are planning on transacting between now and 24 months from now. Now, it might take you 
three months, four months, five months, or even six months to do this when you're starting from zero. But most of you probably already have some leads, some opportunities, but the goal is to build this active pipeline, we'll call it, your top 100 to 100. And if why 100? Well, it just so happens there's a principle called Dunbar's number. And it's sociologists have done these studies and they figured out it's, it's quite literally impossible for one person to maintain more than about 100 to 150 relationships, okay? And so, as we said, real estate is all about relationships until it's about real estate. And I've seen this actually over and over again. I learned this number is true because as I originally built my business and real estate sales team, when I first started, it was bananas. Like I had, I was me and two other agents and I was generating 600 leads a month. I had to go to my broker and say, hey, Brian, help me. Cause like I've got these leads coming in and we piled leads onto people and they had 200 or 300 or 400 leads. And it's impossible to keep in touch with and on top of that many opportunities. It just so happens that 100 uh, is about the right number because guess what? People's circumstances and situations change. You may have somebody who says they're going to sell two years from now and they call you next week and say, oh, you know what? My wife's father passed away. We were, she wasn't going to retire until next year, but we're, she's going to take an early retirement because we got to move out to Kentucky and take care of dad because mom, dad's alone now. Things like that, right? Life happens and it changes people's plans. So you have some people that will fall out of your top 100 because their plans change. But guess what? You're going to be adding new opportunities to your top 100 every week, every day, every month. So let's talk a little bit about how the first thing that you're going to do once, once you start building this top 100, you're going to want to categorize them, okay? And we use four primary categories here um, in basically for people's motivation and timing. And the reason we want to do this is because I want to know who I really need to give the most attention to and who I just need to touch occasionally. Second to that, um, is it will determine how frequently I talk to these people. So Joey, let's go ahead and talk about um, the next ones. You want to take hot? Yeah, I'll take them. So hot, these are your, these are your immediate opportunities. This is a buyer or seller that is looking to make a move within the next 30 days. Let me put this in a different way. This is somebody who's pre-approved. This is a buyer who's pre-approved or a listing that's signed or a listing appointment that is happening in the next like week. These are hot, hot people. So oftentimes we get into a challenge where we put people who are three months out into our hots and we end up overdoing it a little bit. We're gonna go into the to do's of all of this, but I want you to focus on what they are first before we talk about what we'll do with them. We'll get into that in a second. So you wanna take nurture, are, Brett? Yeah, sure, your hots are 30 days out. Your nurtures are the people who are 30 days, so one month to four months out, okay, nurtures. And these are people, again, looking to make a move. You know, maybe they say, yeah, we want to, we want to look at stuff or we've been pre-approved, but we're on the sidelines right now until rates come down, uh, you know, but, and they're not actively looking. This, so nurtures would be that. So one month to four months out. The next category is watch. And these are people from four months to two years out, okay? So four months to two years out are people in your watch category. And the last category is probably going to be most of your sphere of influence that aren't really, quote, in the market. Like, you know, they bought a house a year or two ago. They don't have any plans to sell. And that category we call, Joey, the next one I think is archive. And archive is anyone that is not actively in the market at this time. So your sphere of influence, you're going to put in this category. They're still going to receive messaging from you, but it's going to be a little bit different in the frequency. So that kind of leads us. So HOTS, again, 30 days or less. Nurtures, one month to four months out. Watches are going to be four months to two years out. And that's going to what's going to make up your top 100. So the question is, um, how do we touch these people? One of the core beliefs, right, was that we wanted to add value. How do we touch these people and add value? Joe, you want to talk about that? Yeah, stop sending them recipes. <laughs> I'm kidding. Stop sending them things that don't matter to them. This goes back to what I was saying to you earlier. Send them yeah. things that are important to them that have value to the individual. Look, we're not asking you to send out 22,000 of these things so that, that are important. I'm asking you to, to nurture maybe 40 or 50 people in a way that is elevated than you would somebody who's not in the most important, not in the most important list of people in your life. So stop sending recipes. 
stop, stop telling them to turn their clock. Brett, when was the last time you, uh, you got an email that said, turn your clock back? And you were like, wow, thank God I got that yeah, email. I think I did receive some from some realtor somewhere. I got like, <laughs> hey, guys, tomorrow, spring forward. Don't forget to turn your clocks back or turn your clocks forward. I don't know about you, but if you look at my phone on the screen here, uh, last time I checked my iPhone, when it's the day to turn the clock forward, it automatically does it. So the key thing, if you're going to communicate with people and we want to add value, we don't, we want to, it's all about relevancy, right? It's what's going to be meaningful to them. And when it Absolutely. comes down to that, when it comes down to that, it's, it's a pretty simple formula, right? Every single buyer in your top 100 is going to receive the, oh, what you see is a little house there is listing alerts, right? They're going to, whether they, whether you use the MLS to do that, whether you see your interactive, your chime or your boomtown, you want to make sure that they are getting properties from you. Uh, for your sellers, because um, that's, the, that's the number one thing buyers want, right? They want to look at properties. Your sellers, what's most important to your sellers? Well, they all want to know their home value. There are 300 million Americans in the United States. Did you know that Zillow has 200 million views a month? Of people go to the site and check their home value. Now, the cool thing is, is if you guys uh, have heard of a tool called HomeBot, uh, is it, up, it, it levels up or pluses up, one ups the Zillow Zestimate, right? Because not oh, only it, it, it 10x the Zillow Zestimate. Yeah. Like the, the I and the I and Zillow stands for accurate when it comes to this estimate. So we, we've got to do better. We've got to be able to have a better conversation. And HomeBot allows us, the agent, to lead that conversation. Awesome. So that's so so buyers will get property alerts, sellers will get a home value, and then everyone in your database, including your sphere of influence, should get a monthly market update. Now, one thing about your sphere of influence, um, and digital marketing, okay? Uh, people probably only read 20% of their emails. One of the reasons we like HomeBot, it has a 70 to 80% open rate every single month. Um, but here's one thing for your sphere. Uh, I would make sure everyone you have a mailing address for that truly is your sphere of influence, people you know, like, and trust, and have a connection with. Spend the 70, 80, 90 cents, dollar a month per person to send them something that's physical as well, because a lot of people will get your digital newsletter, but it might go to a spam folder. They might not check their email. So you want to have more than just one touch uh, that's digital going out to your screen. Because remember, if they're if they're if they're even considering real estate, if they've looked on Zillow one time, I promise you they're getting emails from Zillow and from Redfin and Realtor.com and Trulia. And oftentimes the emails that you send out can just be noise in addition to what they're getting from these other companies. That one touch that Brett just talked about of spending the 70, 80 cents for a postcard in addition to your digital farming. And I'm not talking mailing to 2000 people. I'm talking your sphere that is in your top 100, mailing to 50, 60, 70 people. That is the difference maker between your email being spam and your email being value when the time comes that they're, them or someone they know is talking about real estate. And there is, there is a fine line yes. between so this, persistence. persistence. Go yeah. ahead, Brett. No, no. So, so this is the deal, guys. You, a lot of people have, um, what do you call it? Reluct, call reluctance or aversion because they don't want to, quote, be bothering people. And what is bothering people? It's annoying someone. So here's what we know about this business. To be successful, you have to be persistent and consistent. And there's a fine line. So we drew that line because it's a fine line between persistence and annoyance. So what is that fine line between persistence and annoyance where you, you're engaging them, but not overwhelming them? It's cadence, cadence. It's the frequency in which you touch them. And guess what? There's a formula for that. The good news is we don't have to talk to the hots in a different way than we talk to the nurtures, or we don't have to talk to the nurtures in a different way than we watches. It's the same messaging. We're sending them properties. It's just the cadence or the frequency in which we talk to them. So your hots, those people who we think are going to transact in the next 30 days, you want to have two-way communication, either voice or text, with them once a week, right? You don't want them to slip away and go to an open house and write, write an offer with the listing agent. You want to stay close to them. The nurturers, um, you're going to, those people who are anywhere from two months to four months out, you want to get two-way communication with them every 14 days, okay? And then your watches, those people who are four months plus out, 
It's checking in with them once a month. Um, and so here's the deal. Once you get 100 people, 100 active opportunities in your top 100, we know, and this is what we're seeing, we're seeing people close consistently at least two transactions a month. Now, how many, when you have this 100, what's the breakdown? Well, you probably have anywhere between 10 and 20 people in your HOTS. Um, 16 is kind of the critical threshold. When we, uh, we launched with Zillow Flex, they were literally like raining leads down on us. Um, what we saw was that conversion rates, meaning, you know, turning that lead into clients and closings actually dropped when we went much beyond 12 to 15 connections, uh, connections where people had opportunities that they were working. Um, because you can't, there is a phenomenon where you have too many leads. So your hots, you're probably not going to have more than 16 of those. Nurtures, you'll have about 24. And watches, those people who are four months out to two years out, you'll probably have about 60, okay? That's what your top 100 will, will look like. And then the question is, like, once this flywheel is turning, okay, I've got a couple deals coming a month. Um, what does it take? How much work does it take to keep this going? You would be surprised because what I said in the beginning is deals beget more deals, right? A, a well-serviced buyer, when you do an amazing job for them and ask for referrals, they're happy to talk about you. And as we already talked about, listings make babies. Every listing will generate at least one additional transaction from the open house opportunities. Uh, that come through. Uh, if you take advantage of that listing, as we teach and coach and train our agents to through something called event-based farming, sending out mailings around it, knocking the 40 doors on either side, um, you will generate additional listings too. So here's what it takes, okay? Um, you're going to do, we, have, we already talked about, it. you had 16 people in the hot category. You're going to talk to those people once a week, right? 16 people once a week on your hots. So we're gonna make 16 calls a week, okay? Your nurtures, we said you had 24 people in nurture, but you're only calling those people twice a month, okay? So if I call, if I'm gonna call my 24 nurtures, that means I'm gonna call, make 12 calls a week uh, to my nurtures. And I have 60 people in my watch category, okay? So if I was to cycle through all my watches, and give them a call or send them some love or send them a text and get two-way communication going. If I'm to do 60 people over the course of a month, that means I'm gonna need to make 15 conversations or touches with my watches. So I wanted to break it down for you when we answer this question of how much effort does it take to keep the flywheel turning? We're gonna call 16 hots a week, 12 nurtures and 15 watches. Joey, what, it, what we determined is it takes about 43 calls a week. Once you build your top 100, it takes 43 calls a week to keep that wheel turning. Okay. Is, is, any, is anyone on here unwilling to make 43 calls a week? So don't raise your hand if you're willing to do it. If you're unwilling to make 43 connections with your clients a week. I don't see any hands. Do you see any hands? Brett? No. Okay, good. We're so on that, a roll. Okay, that's great. How, that, that's how much effort it takes. Now, there's another piece of this puzzle. As I mentioned, life happens for your top 100. You'll have people who will drop out, uh, but you're also going to have people that you're adding to your top 100. You're spending that couple hours a day for business development. And that, you know, we're talking 10 hours a week. You could get four or five hours of that at open houses um, as your lead generation activity. But your goal is to add four leads per week. So 43 calls a week. And we want to add four week leads a week to, you, to the database. Now, I'm not talking about contacts. I'm not talking about contacts. You might add 10, 15, 20 contacts. I'm talking about leads. These are people who are thinking about buying or selling in the next 24 months. So how many of you feel realistically, I could make eight calls a day, five days a week? Show hands. Come on, I wanna see, okay. And how many of you feel like, okay, if I do an open house, and I do some other stuff, I think I could probably get four leads a week. How many could think, how many think that? Let me see a show of hands. You can do it because we have 22 people doing it now. Joey, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I just, it, the, oftentimes when we talk about lead generation, we talk in the, in the biggest terms possible. I need to, I want to get to 24 deals and that looks like X amount of this and X amount of that. It is the numbers four. Like honestly, to close 24 deals a year, make like half a million to 
eight, six, seven hundred thousand bucks. The number is four leads a week after you've got your 100. So you spend the next four months, I'm telling you, you spend the rest of this year working on building your 100 people in your hots, watches, and nurtures. And I promise you, the four will continue to come. As long as you've got, as long as you're not just focusing on your SOI and open houses, you've got additional lead sources, those four will come to you. And when the time comes that the market gets back down to 5%, those top 100 will be the, it'll be the busiest business you've ever had. Remember when 2021, it was like you could look at a house and it was sold, like literally just like made eye contact with it for a second and it was already dating somebody else. Like that's what it will feel like for you if you're in this level of momentum. And it's four a week after your top 100. So, we'll so take, here's, yeah, let's take a little short recess here uh, and answer some questions. So what questions do you guys have so far about what we've covered? I do have one in the chat, Joey, we'll kick off with. But if anyone sure. else has a question, please, please type it in the chat. Um, someone's got a question Tracy did on the question of frequency of farming. What's your suggestion? How often should one be sending out mailers or postcards? Um, the best practice is two touches a month. Uh, and when you kick off a farm, uh, Gary Keller talks about really when you're going to establish a relationship, you need to make an impression. Uh, and they have a formula called eight by eight, and that's eight touches over eight weeks. And that's really what it takes. Uh, there's a book called 20, The 22 Immutable Laws of Branding, I think says if for, for a consumer to start to recognize a brand, they have to see it 20 times. So uh, it's, it's a long process and it's not cheap. Um, but if you do it right, you start with a high quality online because most of you are probably already doing sphere and open houses. Um, then as you start to generate some transactions, you can start doing that farming. Uh, we, we, with our farming program, we have a, I'll, I'll call it a, what do you call that, Joey? The, the letter that we send that has such a great effect to kickstart the farm. We have a special letter that we send when we help people launch their farm that kickstarts- Their secret the sauce. The secret sauce to kickstart the farm and basically shake out any of the low hanging fruit uh, so that you can generate your first couple transactions in the farm. Because once you land your first transaction, then you can do just listed, pending sale, just sold. You start to generate more visibility. It's more additional opportunities for impressions. And if you do that calling and knocking on top of it, um, we start to see one transaction for every two listings. Uh, one, one listing, I'm sorry, for every two listings. Every listing will bring a transaction. But if yeah. you're doing event-based farming, you call a knock around it, you will see one listing for every two listings. But speaking speaking of momentum when it comes to farming, what we've found is that it's about 15,000 postcards for every one opportunity. And so if you're mailing, we, we set the standard to mail 5,000 a month with our farming campaigns. So 5,000 a month, the expectation would be that you take one listing per quarter. And if we know that one listing or every two listings creates one opportunity, we should have four listings, which is which should generate an additional two opportunities. So you should have six opportunities from your from the farming techniques of mailing five thousand a month, and you mail yeah. twenty five and twenty five twice a month. Jay um, Meta asks, how much do you reinvest your business as a rule, especially with the market shift or normalizing? Here's the thing: in the market shift, a lot of agents actually pull back. Um, it's so it's two things. As a general principle, you want to reinvest 10% of your gross commission or 10% of your income, your commission back into your business. That's what I did consistently. And that will give you the consistent ability to scale and grow. Most agents will make some investment. They make some money and then they stop. They either do that same level of investment or they stop and they wonder why they don't grow. So it's as a percentage of revenue, 10% is a great rule of thumb, but you want to put it for sure in the lead sources that we know are going to generate opportunity. Don't go spending money on Facebook leads. Um, that's that's a, and and you know a caller from the Philippines. It's going to go no knock on the Philippines, but caller from overseas. It's going to call people for you because it's it's not I've done it. <laughs> this is not the best use of resources. But um, at the end of this, we will provide an opportunity for you to request a strategy session if you want to go deeper on the Q and A here and take a look at your business uh, specifically. Anyone else? We, we've got a, we've got a yeah. handful of 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 uh, things I want to chat about next. So save your questions. Yeah. I, I want to keep I want to keep going. We'll we save some, your questions for yeah, the end. We have something special for you because if you've gotten something good out of what we've shared today, let me see by a show of hands, has anybody gotten something like at least one nugget or two that they can apply to their business? Give me a thumbs up or yes in the chat or a hands up. Anybody? 
send us some love. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, then this message that you're going to hear in the next four minutes is for you. So uh, tune in and listen. And then we got something that we're going to wrap up with that you don't want to miss as well. Here we go. Joey. Yep. Coming back at you right now. I believe desire and will to win is everything. I don't know why I'm like I am, but my butt's always burning. There's always something, say, Art, Dad, Gummit, you're supposed to go for it. Art, Dad, Gummit, you're supposed to be somebody. You're supposed to make a difference with your life. What does the $500,000 a year person do? The $50,000 a year person doesn't do. You look at the outside and study those two individuals, everything seems to be the same. They both are the same sex, they both are the same age, they have the same training, the same positions, the same contract, the same fringe benefits. They both are successful, they work hard, they're good family people, make tough commitments. But what's the difference? What does the $500,000 a year person do? The $50,000 a year person doesn't do. He pays the price a little bit more. He works hard in a little bit more. He's loyal to the company in a little bit more. He believes in a little bit more. He makes money in a little bit more. He saves money in a little bit more. If you want to win in these United States, you got to be tough and you can't quit. The last thing I'll talk to you about today in building this winning edge is, folks, if you want to win in business, you got to be a leader. Leadership is everything. You show me anything in these United States that win, I'll show you a leader at work. You show me a successful church, Boy Scout troop, club, football team, business, I'll show you something uh, run by a leader. See, see, I, I thought at one time in my life you had to be smart to win. I used to have these smart people that dress so pretty and talk so pretty and use these big words. They just intimidated me. And I said, Arch, you can't ever be that good. Why don't you just throw in the towel and go on back and coach football for a living? And I found two things out about smart people. I think it's almost impossible for a smart person to win in business in America today. Because I find smart people spend their whole lifetime figuring things out. They're always trying to figure out an easier way and a quicker way. And another thing I found out about smart people is they just don't get around to doing nothing. And see, somebody like Art Williams, everybody says, well, he can't do it. And somebody like that can't do it. But he does it. See, folks, I want you to know almost everybody in America almost does enough to win. They almost get there. They almost are over the hump. They almost have it going. They almost in everything they do almost is a way of life to almost everybody in America. But the winners do it. What do they do? They do whatever it takes to get the job done. They do it and do it and do it and do it and do it until the job gets done. And then they talk about how great it is to be somebody they're proud of. We need leaders in America who can do it. If you want to become somebody, do it. If you want to go in business for yourself, do it. If you want to become financially independent, do it. I hear too much talk in these United States. Everybody can talk a good game. We need people in America who can do it. I go all over this country with A.O. Williams and I have people say, Art, you, you can count on me. Wonderful. Just do it. All right, I guarantee you this is my last stop. I'm going to win now. Super duper. Just do it. All right, if I could just have one good month and get the ball going, I know I could make it big. Super. Just do it. All right, if I could just pay off this debt, I could really go. Great. Just do it. All right, if I could just sell my house. Do it. Uh, but houses ain't selling. Do it anyway. Uh, Art, I'm not making any money. What can I do? Y you just do it. Hey, do what, Art? You do it and do it and do it. Uh, Art, I guarantee I'm going to win this contest. Super duper. Just do it. Uh, Art, I'm over the hump now. Watch my smoke. Great. Just do it. Uh, Art, I want to make it so bad I can taste it. What I do? Y you just do it. Uh, Art, I'm a vice president now. Can I quit doing it? No. Nope. Uh, Art, I don't know if I can keep on keeping on. I'm really hurting what I do. You just do it. Do what, Art? You do it and do it and do it. Uh, Art, all my life I wanted to be somebody important. Well, what do it then? Uh, Art, I'm going to save money so I don't have to go through this again. Great. Just do it. Uh, Art, I don't feel like I've had enough training. What I do? You just do it. Uh, Art, my manager don't give me no help. What I do? You just do it. Oh, Art, you don't understand. I was Mr. Everything at my former company. You don't mean I, I have to start off down at the bottom and do it, do you? Yep, you really got to do it. <laughs> Art, 
All right, what's the primary difference between winners and losers? The, win the winners do it. They do it and do it and do it and do it until the job gets done. And then they talk about how great it is to finally have achieved something unique and how glad they are that they didn't quit like everybody else and how wonderful it is to finally be somebody they're proud of and make a difference with their life. Thank you. I love that. I love that. So to support y'all in uh, just doing it, Joey. Yeah, so I've got, oh, goodness gracious. Hold on one second for me. Here we go. The whole purpose of everything that we're talking about here, the whole purpose of all of this is not to just give you some cool little things that you can take with you. It's so that you can get into action. So the purpose of training, the, the reason why you're here is to get into action. And I am, I am going to help you. We've, I've, we've created, Brett and I created this thing and we're gonna help you get into action. So if you remember, we created a challenge for you all to, for everyone here who's on the call, whether you're with real estate experts, whether you're not, doesn't matter. It, uh, and it's called 45 Hard. And I wanna remind you about Felicia's story. Felicia's story of doing something uncomfortable and challenging for a short period of time to create massive opportunity for herself. Momentum. So we created this thing, she momentum. She was case study of momentum and she was really the inspiration for this, right, Joy? A hundred percent, because what we saw is, well, she's the case study and then our, a bunch of us at Real Estate Experts did went through 75 Hard, which was really hard. But the results that come out of doing, doing something like this for a short period of time will last a lifetime. And so we created the, real, the version of, it's called 45 Hard, it's Real Estate Edition. Here's what it looks like. Remember that book we talked to you about? Read 10 minutes of fanatical prospecting every day. 10 minutes. If you don't like to read like me, put it on Audible and listen to it for 10 minutes a day. Talk to five people a day for 45 days straight. That can be some form or fashion of new clients, old clients, follow-ups. I don't care what it is, but talk to five people about real estate a day. And then two hours of lead generation, typically one hour of, of development, business development, meaning new opportunity, and one hour of following up with opportunity. And what would it look like if you asked 45 people for one referral a day? So that's part of this challenge. Ask for 45 referrals over 45 days. And then we actually are going to create an accountability group around this. So if you are interested in doing this for the next 45 days, I, wanna, I just wanna share with you, it's only 450 minutes of reading over the next 45 days, but you'll have 225 conversations. You'll have prospected for 90 hours. You'll have generated 45 referral conversations and you'll have attended seven meetings for accountability in the next 45 days. This challenge is not about what you get. It's not, about, you're going to get a lot out of it. You're going to get business opportunity. You're going to get things that you didn't have before. You're going to get uh, in conversations that didn't exist prior to doing this work. It's about who you become over the next 45 days and what you teach yourself about what's capable, what you're capable of and what's possible for you. So I want you to join us. Scan the QR code. If you're on your phone, you can go to join45hard.com. It's a, it's a link that will lead you to an, a little website that talks about what this is. But you can scan this. I want you to join us. It is completely brokerage agnostic. Agents from all over California are joining us in right now. And we're going to be your accountability partner for these, these five things that you're going to do every single day for the next 45 days. What I know for certain is that those five things that we've chosen will generate opportunity for you over the next, not just Q4, but Q1 and Q2, it will be the jump start. It will be the momentum Build that you it. need yeah. to drive into Q1 and Q2 when rates drop to 5% and the market comes back in a way that you weren't prepared for. And so Joey, scan I, this QR code. Yeah, go ahead. QR code if, you wanted, if, you're, if you're not just interested, but committed to taking your business to the next level. Because as we opened up this conversation today, I told you we're a critical point in the market. Right, the market's frozen because of interest rates. But guess what? It is going to thaw, uh, and and it's going to happen. And if you take these activities and actions now to build your top 100, guess what? In your top 100 are all those people who are on the sidelines right now. And, when, and if you if you don't take the actions and activities to get out there and create and deepen those connections and relationships, guess what? Everybody knows three or four realtors. I hate to tell you. <laughs> And the realtor that's going to get the business is the one that's in relationship with them. 
So the purpose of training is action. You've learned some great things here today. If you want to apply it, the next step is to join us. Join us for the challenge. It's, it's a short window of 40. You can do anything for 45 days. I did the 75 hard for 75 days. It was hard, but we can do anything for 45 days. And if you're willing to put yourself in that space of being a little uncomfortable for a short period of time, you can do what Felicia Duncan did. She was willing to get uncomfortable for a short period of time. And it's she got into that momentum, that flywheel started turning like we talked about. And now she's at the yep. top of our leaderboard. She's just closing three, four transactions a month. But let's get you yep. to two. Um, any thoughts or questions before we got a couple other slides of closing or no, Joey? Just a few more. By the way, we do this type of thing every single month. So if you got value out of this or you wish somebody else would have come, we want more people to attend these masterminds. Scan this QR code, it'll take you to a Google form. Um, yes, it includes weekends, Ryan, 45 days straight. Um, scan this QR code, or you can just email me, Joey at The Real Experts. I'll add you to our, our email list so that you can get notified when we do things like this. Next month, I believe we're talking about how to build a successful real estate team. So if that's something that you or someone you know you think you would, would provide value in, then I know you're going to want to attend this. Joey, quick question. And then last, but, yeah. Quick question. For people who want to join this 45 hard, uh, when is the kickoff? I know there's a little kickoff, but you're going to tell them kind of the ground rules of it, and you're going to give them some scripts uh, as far as what to say uh, when you're yep. reaching out to your sphere of influence. Uh, also, what to say, the best thing to say if you have old leads. Um, Joey will provide you with some great uh, script on that. And then uh, we have an app also that we can use to track uh, your activities. So, yeah, so you're going to get an account. The, the next launch is going to be uh, probably early next week. So if you're interested, sign up now. You'll get an email from me probably tomorrow about when we're going to be starting the first sort of like kickoff meeting for you all. Uh, and don't hate me, but it's going to start at 8.30 in the morning. So if that's, uh, if, that, if that's the other, we should have added that into the five or six things that you're going to have to do for 45 days is be ready for an 8.30 in the morning meeting on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. We'll figure it out. But you'll get an email from me after uh, probably on Friday once I have everyone who's interested. Awesome. Uh, last piece of the puzzle is if you got value out of this and you are looking to get more value, you want to schedule a, a strategy session to go deeper into anything we talked about. This is my Calendly link. It's joeyscalendar.com. If you can't scan the QR code, by all means, set up a 30-minute conversation with me. I've coached hundreds and hundreds of agents. I coach Felicia. I, will, I, will, I would love to coach you on how to grow to the next level of that business. And I promise you, we won't get everything in 30 minutes, but we'll at least get started in where you should be. So that's it. That's our whole meeting for today. I want to thank you all for sticking with us. Thank you for your time, for your energy, and your efforts. And if you have any questions, you can email me, Joey at The Real Experts, or you can join us at join45hard.com. I hope to see you all there. Have a great one. Adios.